Hey everyone, this is Bradley Bush with another algebra video. Today we're talking about transformation of functions. This is an amazing topic. Let's talk about our to-do list. First thing we'll do is we'll, we will review some common function graphs. In fact, there's seven function graphs that you see all of the time in algebra, and we'll do a quick review of them so you can have those fresh in your mind because that's really the starting point for this, the discussion today. The second thing we'll do is we'll talk about types of transformations. We'll take those seven types of functions that we use and we'll transform them and we'll do certain things to them and that's what the different types are. And then at the end, we'll do a quick review of all the types and that'll be it. Let's start. So here are the seven most common graphs you'll see in algebra. First one is just the horizontal line. They call it the constant function. It's y equals some constant c. Here I have a c, but that constant could be 5, it could be negative 2, whatever you want. I also have listed below a bunch of information about each of these function types. So if you want to check that out, you're more than welcome to. The identity function is just a diagonal. Every point on the line is um, the same, meaning 1, 1, the x and y coordinates are identical. 2, 2, 3, 3, negative 1, negative 1. That's why it's called the identity function. The third type is the absolute value function, which kind of looks like the identity function on the right side of the graph. But the left side of the graph, that identity function has been flipped up and made positive. So you have the absolute value. The quadratic function is the next one we'll see. And that is the classic parabola U shape. We have the square root function that starts at zero, zero and goes up and to the right. We have the cubic function, which is X cubed, which kind of looks like a parabola on the right, but then the left side of the parabola is flipped down across the X axis. and the cube root function. So this is like the square root, but instead of having a square or a two there in the index, it has a three. So the right side of the graph looks kind of like the square root function, but the left side does not because the square root function doesn't have a left side because it doesn't have any negative outputs, whereas the cubic or the cube root function does. So those are the seven most common types of functions you'll see. So we will take those seven functions and we'll start from there and then we'll start to transform them. So we need to know where we start to know then how to transform. So now you have all of those in your head. Let's talk about types of transformations. So the first type of transformation we'll discuss is a vertical shift. So first of all, let's talk about C. So C is just a constant and it is an element of, that's what this little epsilon means, Greek letter, element of, or it belongs to, and this thick left-sided R means all real numbers, and the plus on the top means all positive real numbers. So this constant is a positive real number. That is all that this C is an element of the the positive reals means. So now that we have that out of the way, how we shift vertically is we will take the actual function itself, f, and we'll add or subtract a constant. If we add a constant, add a positive constant, then we move it up, move the function up. If we subtract a positive constant, we move the graph down that many units. So Let's, let me show you how it actually worked with these two examples. So we can see um, y equals x squared. So this is a classic parabola. The black, para the black um, graph is the standard parabola, y equals x squared. And if we move it up, so every point is moving up a certain amount here we're moving up two units. 
So y equals x squared plus 2. So we haven't changed the shape of the function at all. We haven't changed, it's not thicker or wider or narrower or twisted in any way. It, we purely pick it up off the graph, move it, and put it back down. Stays the same shape, everything. We're just moving it here up or down. So the next one on the right here is going down. And you can see each of these points goes down two units from the original y equals x squared. So we can tell that this graph here is y equals x squared minus 2. So negatives drop it down, positives raise it up. <laughs> Quick side note. This is super common, a super common issue in algebra. How do you know the difference between these two? The function plus a constant, or you add a constant inside of the function. How does that change? How does it look? Well, let's talk about it. If you have the function itself, and you're adding a constant afterwards, then you'll see the function like f of x equals x squared. You'll see the x squared, and then you'll have the constant, like a positive 5, added on the outside. It's not inside the x squared. Whereas if you're doing all this inside, the plus 5 is actually inside of the function. The function's x squared, so inside the parentheses, you will see the constant being added. So those are big distinctions. In all of these transformations, you will have the distinction of outside the function transformation and inside the function transformation, and they do different things. So you have to be aware of what's happening. Are you, are you adding a constant inside the function or outside the function? Super important to know. So horizontal shifts, that is our second group. And again, the constant is a positive real number. If we add a constant inside, we move to the left. So we move in the opposite direction of the sign. If we subtract a positive constant, then we're moving to the right. So let's see what's going on. We can see here every point is moved to the left one unit. So that should tell us that this new function here should be y equals x plus 1 squared. And it's a positive one because we move to the left. Again, they move in the opposite direction of the sign. Our next example, you can see everything's moving to the right one unit. So this function, the new function, the red one, should be x minus 1 quantity squared. Again, a note, horizontal shifts moves opposite of the sign, and vertical shifts move in the same direction as the sign. Those are confused very, very often, so just wanted to make sure that we took a second to talk about that. All right, let's talk about reflection about the x-axis. So if your function is f, and here our function is just our normal y equals x squared, we can rotate that about the x-axis or flip it down below the x-axis simply by multiplying by a negative. So our new function down here would be y equals negative quantity x squared. And that, once we simplify, just becomes negative x squared. A note, though, that's important here, if, you, if your function isn't just x squared, say your function is x squared plus 2x minus 3, and you're multiplying by a negative, you've got to distribute that negative to each of the terms of the function to make this work right. So keep that in mind. 
reflection about the y-axis. So here we're taking the function and we're rotating it around the y-axis. It's almost as if we have a stick being the y-axis and we're spinning that stick and it's coming around towards us and then to the left. So our original function then is y equals x squared, sorry, the square root of x. And our new function then To achieve this rotation or reflection about the y-axis, we have to multiply by negative inside the function. So our new equation that we just created has got to be y equals the square root of negative x. Awesome. Let's talk about vertical stretching and shrinking. Again, c is a constant that is a positive real number. And here we're multiplying by the function on the outside of the function with a constant. If that constant is bigger than 1, certain things happen. If that constant is between 0 and 1, other things happen. So if the constant is bigger than 1, what we have is a stretch, meaning we're pulling the function away from the x axis. So we're pulling it up and down, meaning it's being stretched away from the x-axis. So this new function that we have here is going to be y equals 3 sine x. So the constant we used was 3. If that constant that we use is between 0 and 1, then what happens is we are shrinking it or pushing it towards the x-axis instead of away from the x-axis. So we're flattening it. This function, the new function that we just created, is called y equals, or is y equals 0.3 sine of x. So we've multiplied out in front by one third or 0.3. Something that's interesting also to note, these vertical stretches and shrinks, notice horizontally we didn't change anything. The function did not move left or right when it was transformed. It simply was flattened or expanded vertically. No movement left or right. The endpoints of this periodic function sine x stayed the same. So no movement left or right, just stretching it up and down or shrinking it. Let's talk about horizontal. So now we are moving left and right. Notice here we didn't move up and down. The up and down limit stayed the same in both of these cases. All we did was move left and right. We pulled it left and right. We stretched it horizontally or we shrunk it horizontally. So here what's happening is we are either pushing it towards the y-axis or pulling it away from the y-axis. So it's like you take your hands on the left and right of it and you pull it away from the y-axis or you pull your hands apart horizontally or you smush your hands together horizontally. To achieve this, we multiply by a constant inside the function, not outside. So if that constant is bigger than 1, then what we're doing, in effect, is we are squishing towards the y-axis horizontally. And the function, the new function here, is y equals sine of 2x or we are pulling it away from the y-axis so stretching it horizontally it's moving out left and right <laughs> so this new function 
is y equals sine of 0 0.65x. Something that's important that you probably don't think about now that we have finished our discussion of the transformations, the order in which we perform the transformations actually matters. Kind of like in algebra, when you're trying to algebraically manipulate something and you mess up your PEMDAs, your order of operations, and you get the wrong answer, it's kind of frustrating. So you could get the wrong answer here if you perform these transformations if you're doing more than one for a given problem they need to be done in a certain order so the first thing you do is you do the horizontal shifting doesn't matter if it's left or right <laughs> then the next thing you do is the stretching or shrinking shrinking it doesn't matter if you're doing it vertically or if you're doing it horizontally the next thing after that we reflect and that is about the y-axis or x-axis both doesn't matter which one and the final thing would be the vertical shifting. So if you're picking it up and pushing the graph up or picking the graph up and pushing it down, that's the last thing that you do. And here's our review of the transformations. We're almost done here. So we have the vertical shifts. We add or subtract a constant on the outside and we move the function up or down. If we add or subtract a function inside, or a constant inside the function, then we are moving the graph of the function left to right, opposite of the sine of the constant. We can reflect about the x-axis by multiplying by negative on the outside. We can reflect about the y-axis. Oh, look at that. There's a typo. Reflect about the y-axis by multiplying by a negative on the inside. We can stretch vertically by multiplying by a constant bigger than one on the outside. We can shrink vertically by multiplying by a constant between zero and one on the outside. And finally, we can stretch or shrink horizontally. The horizontal shrink comes if you multiply inside the function by a constant bigger than one, and your horizontal stretch meaning pulling away from the y-axis happens if your constant that's multiplied inside the function is between 0 and 1. Hope that helps. Let me know if you have questions, and thanks for watching.